away we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> wherever you might be in the world. I am Kay Elizabeth Green, and I welcome you to Perfectly Imperfect, the show that is designed to give you tips, strategies, and resources so that you can live your best life now. Um, I am joined today with by my co-host, Karen Fern, who is my companion for this journey, helping me to um, manage everything that needs to be managed as we are doing the show. Can you believe it that we are now into three months of doing this, Karen? <laughs> Girl, when I come back on time, what have we been doing? I said, my gosh. And this, you know, because it reflects back on what we don't do, right? When we look at what we do, and we look back at what we don't do, what we don't get done, it's, it's, it's staggering to see when we don't start something or we think about it, but we do nothing with the idea. Yep, 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 yep. And all ideas are... Um, all, all, our all ideas come to us clothed with everything that they need in order for us to be successful. It is up to us, though, to realize that and to go ahead and push through when things don't quite go right. And I know that you have been met with your challenges and I have been met with my challenges to decide if that is truly what you want. Do you really want what you say you want? And um, just knowing that you want something different is the key to get started. It is the key to take the first step. So I am going to be talking about today the essential skills to create the life you desire. And that is my new program that will be starting in January. Uh, I am really excited about, about it. I'm launching it January 9th. And today I'm going to take a, uh, that's what the show is about, to give you an idea of what I mean about essential skills to create the life you desire. Again, just for those, everybody that's on replay and, and are wondering what they're listening to, you're listening to Perfectly Imperfect. And I am Elizabeth Green. If you've never heard me before, I am an intuitive life coach and also the founder of the Indigo Institute of Nevada. Um, I believe that Indigos if have a certain traits. I believe that there are certain individuals that have certain traits that uh, people, they can wonder, uh, is this a blessing or a curse? And if you're wondering if you're an indigo, you can always go to my website, K Elizabeth Green. I have there for you a quick quiz and a PDF to help you assess, is this talking about you? And if so, do you have some of those traits? And would you like to develop those traits so you can live your best life? now. Not waiting, not hoping, not wishing, but to live it now. Too many people I notice, Karen, are existing and yes. they're complaining. Mm -hmm. And it is my goal, my passion, my purpose to help you realize that you can live your life now, not saying that it's going to be perfect. That is the um the name of the show, not saying that you're going to be perfect, but the fact that you um, realize that you're ever in the sense of becoming. And it, as you are becoming and ready to move forth on your journey, 
I am there to help you. So I'm going to share a little bit about that. But I'm curious, Karen, how are you as we are doing this with our, uh, this being our holiday, um, for those of you in North America that celebrate Christmas, um, we've got a couple of days before Christmas. Karen and I debated whether or not we would be doing our shows, but we felt it was important to be consistent that once we started on this journey, that we continued on this journey and um, that today was an important day to be about. So how's the weather up there and how have you done as far as setting, getting ready for this holiday? Uh, you know, the weather is so beautiful right now. And my son and I was talking this morning. We're enjoying the weather because it is nice. I was cold last week, but it's pretty nice right now. So there's a little bit of flurries a couple of days ago, but nothing. But we know it's not good for global warming, but we're enjoying it as people <laughs> at the moment, right? That's what we were talking about this morning. And, you know, as you said, we decided to carry through this show because my son said to me, Mom, I thought you were going to be off. That's the little one. And I said to him, I am off. I'm right here. But I've got this this show that, you know, myself and co-hosts plan to carry through. And we're doing it. We're doing it because everybody has to go to work and finish uh, on Thursday anyways. And it's not depriving you guys from what you have to do. We went Christmas shopping for the things that they want to get. I mean, you know my style. I, I usually give from the heart. So everybody gets a lot of things that I'm preparing along the way. I do not wait for December, you know, for you to get something. So, <laughs> and a little token of whatever else I see the need for or think it will inspire. Like last year, I gave everybody a journal, a book, and everybody was pretty not too happy with me <laughs> and I had sticky notes inside you know with pens and just uh, markers and all kind of colorful things for them to just draw all their lives and see where it's going and see how they can improve on it and so I had this little spiel when I, I gave out all the gifts to everybody my daughter a lot everybody and some were exciting and some the guys weren't too excited about it <laughs> but I noticed throughout the year even the ones that weren't excited They've been doing things in a book. Like sometimes I, I walk in at, at one day and my husband was in the room and the book was spread out with all the markers. And I was like, because huh? he was the most complaining one about the books. And I just went back out the room. I saw my son use the book. And so I realized sometimes when you give gifts to people, even the time they don't know they're in need of it. If you see the need, go ahead and give it whatever it is in your heart to do. And that was really in my heart to do. <laughs> Well, go ahead. So having said that, I sort of streamline myself. Uh, you know, I'm resting in background. And so I like to make all my homely stuff. That's what I do. And so I take, I make a list. It's on the fridge. And I give every, I, I all the items that I'm going to do, I give a date to it or, you know, two items for the day that I know I can manage. And that's how I do things. This year, I did it a little different by putting everybody's name on a separate list and putting down what they can assist with. And I found it went so much better than me saying, can you help me? Can you help me? And I left with a book. Everybody was looking at the list and scratching out. And my, my, my youngest son, he's like, I can't believe I got five things done already. And I was thinking, what a great idea. Hey. <laughs> everybody <laughs> came to the list, looked at the list, and get their stuff done. They might got one or two things left on the list. And I'm not worrying myself about this. That's a growth that I had for myself this year, is allowing people to do what they need to do and not having to worry if they're going to get it done. Mm -hmm. I think that was a gift that I was so needing for me. And I'm so happy that I gave it to myself. So to answer <laughs> your question for this year, I am loving it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you went ahead and did that because many of writing a list is one of the tools, one of those essential tools to really create your life because mm -hmm. we can have so much stuff distract us, but that list helps us focus. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about the essential skills, you know, as a teacher, I realized mm -hmm. that the first three grades, 
you got the essential skills to be able to navigate. And if you didn't have those, if you didn't have a good foundation, Mm -hmm. what happened was it would crumble. You Mm -hmm. would not be successful. And I really believe that in life, it is the same way. When I left teaching, when I first discovered these principles and things that, wait a minute, you can do, be, have anything that you want? Anything. 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 Yeah. When I saw what you had ahead of there, I was like, oh my God, this is so dead on. Anything that you want, because the, the funny thing is we ask for things that we really don't want. In the sense Correct. of, if, if I know for me personally, I might see somebody struggling with something and say, oh my God, I wonder how they make you this. Or I wonder how they do this. And then God will just give it to me so I can see how they did. And it's not really something I wanted. <laughs> I didn't need that. But I went and say, I wonder why or ask. No, let me wonder why and ask for the things I really want and need. And I notice when people ask questions on Facebook, if I don't answer it in the public, I might take it down a lot. If it's very good questions, I'll take it down and I'll spend time answering those questions. Actually, some of those things I've taken and used on Periscope, I've made like seven steps to get over or something somebody might have asked. And mm-hmm. so it's useful for somebody else. But it also allow me to know that I have stored in my head so much stuff that I don't even think that somebody else might need it. But when somebody asks the question, it allow me to use the things that I've got just stored up in there. So I like to thank people for asking questions because not only they're getting the benefit of me answering it or whoever answered, but also allowing the person who answered to use up their skills, you know, in a good way. That's that's why I like group classes, and that's why this is going to be a group coaching session, mm-hmm. my uh, program that I'm starting on January 9th, because I learned so much you know, I may be the presenter, I may be the facilitator, but I learn so much from other people. Who yes. come. It is through asking the questions mm-hmm. that bring it out. You know, like sometimes people, when you're doing a seminar, you're doing a um, a group thing, people are afraid to ask questions, yes. but I always encourage to, people to ask questions because it is through the questions. If you have it, somebody else in that room had it. And we find out so much information. One of the things that we, um, my show is going to focus on is a couple of business books uh, next year. And one of them is Stephen uh, Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Mm -hmm. because there are habits that we want to develop to really live our best life now. (laughs) You know, and if you, you know, if you don't, you know, to really live your best life now, you want to develop certain habits that happen all the time. a lot of people get stuck because they don't know that their skills, their their things that if they put into their toolbox, they create create their life, create the life that they want. And that's why I'm so passionate about this program that I've put together. I've put oh, together man, good. practical and spiritual information that I found through my many years mm-hmm. of studying and formulate so that it can be so it can be faster and it can be quicker for them yes. you know uh, life is meant to be good life mm-hmm. is a you're supposed to live it richly <laughs> but unfortunately yes. we're like um We're like the baby elephant that's been trained Mm -hmm. that that chain can hold them. Uh, And candles, yep. Um, I'm reading our our, our, um, chat. And um, uh, Sarah points out here that uh, Jack Canfield's Success Principles, that's another good book. Mm -hmm. Uh, But... I like Covey as the base. And then we're going to talk about the four agreements. And maybe we'll talk about uh, 
Can Jack Canfield's success principles. I had a chance to study with Jack Canfield, have her certificate sitting up on, on the wall where mm -hmm. I spent time with him and learning his principles. Like I said, I have had a very rich and full life. And one of the things that I've done is try to pull from each one of those, those critical tools, those critical things that you need. You know, yes. um <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna read this <laughs> because I realize that sometimes the people that are on replay don't get to see the chat. It depends yes. on how you view the replay. Right. And um, one of the comments in here, it says, more proof that you're the boss. Thank you, sir. Yes. I am not the boss. <laughs> I am in the process of learning. I just have had the privilege of being here for such a long time. <laughs> oh, you, boss, you boss over the principle and the things that and the experiences that you are giving. So yeah. you boss over those. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm a master at helping you get clear on what it is that you really want. And if it is that you just want clarity, that might be the first step that all you want is clarity. And what I teach you is how to put the power of your mind, the law of attraction, and your intuition to work for you so that you can create the life that you desire. You know, um, I was doing a scope and I've started doing Periscope. I am so proud of my How are you today? How are you today? You can always learn something new. And if you look at the first couple of scopes that I did, you can tell. <laughs> I'm in the learning process. But too often, we are afraid to fail. Whenever you start anything new. You are going to have some stumbles. You are going to not do it perfectly. Um, but if the more you do it, the better it becomes. The better it becomes, um, the more you enjoy it. I remember when I first learned, it, learned to roller skate. I didn't learn to roller skate as a child. I was afraid of it. I thought that you had to be athletically gifted in order to roller skate. And there were some people who had that gift and there were others who didn't. When I realized that you can do, be, have anything that you, um, you want, I was willing, like you said, falling is a part of growth. It is a big part of growth. And if you are afraid to fall, you'll never learn, you know, and you have to be willing to do that. So uh, I'm reminded about, um, Karen goes ahead and takes that. I'll just click this uh, for a minute. Oh, she's back. <laughs> uh, um, me and okay. these phones forgetting to plug it out. Hey, I, I know what you mean. It, and <laughs> you remind me, like let me reach over here and do the same <laughs> thing. That, um, how, you know how you train a grasshopper? You can take a grasshopper, put them in a jar, and put a cap on that grasshopper, a uh, uh, cap on the jar. And that grasshopper will jump and hit the top and jump and hit the top. And then you'll notice the longer the grasshopper stays there, the lower their jump is. And they'll jump lower and lower because they hit their head. And what you can do is you can take the top off and just sit it there. And that grasshopper who has the capabilities of getting out of that jar will never try again because they have bumped their head so many times. They will only jump so high. And I think that that is what, and I don't think I know that that is what has happened to many of us, especially indigos, that they've hit their head so many times that they are afraid 
afraid to try. They only jump so high. And what my goal and my passion is to do is to let you know that you can jump as high as you want. There is no ceiling. If you're willing to do the work, because that grasshopper's muscles had gotten weak because they were only jumping so high. And so they had to work once it learned, it's just like with us, you know, we become weak because we've only jumped so high. But once we realize that there is no ceiling, all I have to do is learn the skills and I can do it. I can be it. But you have to be willing to take responsibility. And I I wrote it down for me so that I wouldn't I would hit the steps. First level of responsibility are those people who are victims. They tell you, I am not responsible for anything. I am at the effects of life. Do you know any people like that? <laughs> Too many. Oh, <laughs> me. Oh, man. People did it to me. Yes. Okay. They are victims. Mm. I don't really work well with those people. Mm. Those people need to find somebody else. You know, then the second level of responsibility is I take responsibility, but you pick and choose what you're responsible for. I'm responsible for the good. <laughs> Not the bad. Not the they bad. did it to me. You know, I did it if it's something we like. But if it's something that we don't like, it's they did it to me. Let me tell you what they did to me. Mm -hmm. One of the things, um, I did corporate training. And one of the classes that I taught was conflict resolution. Okay. And with a conflict, there are two people. Anytime you have a conflict, there are two people. And it's, you know, they were always telling me people who are selected with their responsibility, they would tell me what the other person was doing wrong. And I would always point them back to themselves, you know, because whenever you're pointing your finger like this, one finger is pointing at that person, but notice that three are pointing back at me. So I always say, start with the one person that you can make a change. You. Mm -hmm. You can't make a change with anybody else. You can't make no. anybody else change, but you can make yours. You can change yourself. And yes. responsibility is your ability to respond. Nobody can make you mad. Nobody can make you act a certain way. You choose to. And if you don't take back and move to the third level of responsibility, you're going to always be uh, a product of your circumstances. Yeah. Because isn't it true, Elizabeth? Uh, you know, in a split second, if somebody gets you really upset, like I was in a space the other day, and this lady just swipe in front of me and move the stuff and ask me to move something. And I said to her, you know, this this specific thing was in the way. I said, so I can't get by because I'm waiting to move that. But I didn't say it. I said it in a manner where I was like, <laughs> what? I can't get by. And mm -hmm. she simply turned away and she was in a hurry, she in a rush, and she's probably upset that she couldn't get through. But she simply walked away, did what she had to do, and came right back and apologized. And said, you know, I was just trying to get back to work. I was just off for a minute. So uh, I do apologize. I didn't mean to. But if I had reached out to her in a manner of, you know, <laughs> there is no way she would leave. She's right and still turn back to, to say, I apologize. Because she was in the wrong. There is no question. But I wasn't pointing that out. I just said, you know, sorry, I couldn't get past through this. So I myself was blocked. So that, that's why, you know, I have so-and-so, whatever I had in my hand in the way. And, and she said, you know, it's, it's just because I needed to go back. And I realized, and 
I, I just, I just want to apologize. That's what she said to me. Hey, that's because you're at the, you're at the, really at the fourth level of responsibility. <laughs> you have at least moved to the third level. I'm responsible. I'm responsible. I am the cause and the source for my life, my choices, decisions, experiences, and results. It's up to me. Mm -hmm. When you move to that level, then yeah. you don't react when the car cuts you off. No. no, you don't don't react when you have people standing in front of you. You don't no. react when the 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 traffic is bad because mm -hmm. you realize if I'm the cause and source for my life and my choices and my emotions, what you realize is that the only person that's getting upset is me. Yes. I had, when I was managing, I had two people that didn't get along well, okay? And so as the manager, you, you, you try to see if people are going to work it out on their own. Mm -hmm. Yes. And That's when the first you, thing you want. <laughs> okay, let's see if they're going to work it out on their own. And then when you realize that um, they're not, you as the manager have to, because that is your responsibility, that is part of your job to have them work as a team. You know, I brought them in and I talked to them first, as I always advise uh, managers to do. I talked to them first individually, and then I brought them together to discuss it. So when I asked one, I said, um, why are you upset? What's wrong? What's happening? Because every, the one said, every time I walk by her desk, she goes, hmm. I said, and, okay. I said, okay. And what does that mean? That means that she doesn't like me. Now, one of the women was on the heavier side, okay? She ate pretty much, and she was at the victim stage, and she mm. ate pretty much anything she wanted. Mm. The other one was a vegetarian, but her natural body type, she was very slim, mm -hmm. okay? And when she, the one who was the victim, I guess was jealous, and upset about the other's body weight. So the fact that, and, and I realized that the, the vegetarian was doing that on purpose. She would walk yes. past her desk, walk past her desk, because she sort of enjoyed needling her. Yes, yes. You have to know when people are enjoying your discomfort and you can give them that power to keep enjoying your discomfort. <laughs> you know, people like to say to me, like my son, oh, my young son, I was like, mom, you're always so happy. We can't talk about you. And mom, you're always so, uh, you're, you're always positive and upbeat. So we are not discussing you. <laughs> I want to talk about somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> if he was making reference to something. Mm -hmm. I said to him, you know, it's a choice though. The person who is not doing so has chosen not to do so when somebody's happy it does not mean that things are not happening in their lives that they wish were different that they would like to see in a certain manner but if they focus on that like i was doing my fruitcake today my black cake i do it i was doing it today and i was making cheese straws and some cookies and the mixer there's a little part that holds the the, the spinner to the body of it and a piece of it fell off and I can't find it. And I looked for like 15 to 20 minutes everywhere, pick up everything, vacuum everything. And I said, okay, you are trying to keep me from progressing forward. And I have got this three things I got to get done in the morning before I come and co-host with Elizabeth. So what are you trying to do is distract me. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to wash the dishes. I'm going to put everything set up there. I'm going to get everything baked. 
and then you will just show up or not. <laughs> I loved it because I can feel myself going into a state where I'm now panicking, looking, searching, and that will just bring a headache. And I don't do well. I don't like headaches. I don't take medication for headaches. So I'm the kind of person, if it's really hurting, I go lie. So, okay, that is not going to happen. So I left it alone. And you know, I got through everything that I set out to do. Mm -hmm. I was able to appear here. I still didn't find it, but I am not letting that keep me away from what I set out to do. And that's like somebody that could have been a person. <laughs> you, 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 made, you made a choice and that's one of the essential skills is to recognize that we have a choice. Nobody chooses for us how we are going to respond. It's up to us. It's up to us. We choose it. You know, we can jump up and down. And like you said, if you jump up and down, the only person that's going to be affected is you. You're going to be stressed out. Yes. You're going to have sure. the headache. Yes. You're going to be the one who's uh, not accomplishing your task. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you don't take back your power and recognize that it's up to you to decide. Yes, I mean, how you, you are going to yes. respond. Definitely, definitely. As you said today, you know, this is three months that we are doing this. Mm -hmm. And I didn't send it to you yet because everything wasn't ready. But I said today, like, it didn't matter. I, I wanted to put on the, po the privacy policy before I sent it to you. And I said, everything don't have to be right. Because I've been saying, had I put wheel to the grindstone and did the site when we first spoke on it, it would have been up. I would have collected at least a dozen or two emails. Never mind the big number. I know that will come. But I didn't do it even though I'm working on other things. I wasn't working that specific thing. And when you don't work on that thing, time just go by. Correct. And when you fret about people not doing stuff, you get stuck fretting about them and they go by. Mm -hmm. I like the stuff that you're doing for this. Yeah. Well, see, Karen, I think you're at the level of responsibility that we all want to get to. I am responsible for everything. Yes. And your thought is, I am the sole uncontested author of my life. I am the captain of my ship, mm -hmm. the leader of my vision, my dreams, and mm. all possibilities. Oh, well I am at the cause for it all, directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. The past, the present, and future. Mm -hmm. I am responsible for everything, whether I can touch it or not, see it or not. When we get to that level of responsibility, then we can create, you know, yes. what we want. Because mm -hmm. we know that nobody else has anything to do with it. Yes. It's all up to us, mm -hmm. you know. And when when you get to that, you recognize, and some people get scared to get to that level, but when you get yes. to that level, it's like you can accept Mm -hmm. What I see is the effects of what I created. Hmm. And and some some people, as you say, is afraid, and they're afraid to see that happen. It's like meditation. There's Christians who will say that you don't meditate because you are crossing over to a place where you know evil spirits can attend to you and whatever. Is that true? I'm sure because evil is all over us. It doesn't just go away if we didn't meditate. It is there in your face. And if you're in certain parts of the world, it's more prevalent than if you're in other parts of the world because we're too busy doing stuff here in North America and everything in Russia. If you're still in North America, but you go where it's quiet and there's nothing around and you want to know what's happening in nature, you go there and you will see things because that's what happens when you're in quiet places, when you there's nobody to disturb the earth, when everything is just natural and it's in its natural state, you will find and see and get visited and actually feel presence that you might not even be conscious what it is, but it's there. Mm -hmm. And so my son asked me yesterday, he says, mom, what do you think about meditation? You know, because uh, people always talk about it and what have you. I said, I'd asked a friend years ago, when I had 
I would say for years I've quieted my spirituality because um, as I told you before, I didn't want to talk about what was happening and it, it seemed to be bad stuff I would tell people. And so I had to leave it alone. And so I'd ask this friend, she said, Karen, be careful. Don't do meditation because you're not going to like, you know, you got to be careful. And so I, I said to her, careful in what sense? And she couldn't explain in what sense. So you see, I'm the kind of person that if you tell me something, I'm going to want to know in what sense. Like you're telling me how to do it, but why? Because she's, I said, like, I read my Bible and I talk to God all the time because when I was young, I heard you can't ask. But if I don't ask, how would I know? I'm a, question, I'm a person that questions what I need to know. And I, I got to go to him and ask. And, you know, when I did it for myself, I know there was things that I got out of or stopped the process because it was, it was just so real and in your face. But I'm the type of person who will go back to finish and investigate. But I also realized that's also why some people don't do a lot of things is because when, they, when the realization and reality of it is there and so strong and, and sort of tangible, it is scary as hell. Well, you know, to them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and and that is one of the essential skills, especially for intuitives. Mm -hmm. uh, in the in North America, we don't recognize our connection to source. We don't recognize, uh, we have so many, and many people have been, um, well, let me say it this way. Religion, a lot that has been presented in North America is presented through fear. Fear of, oh, somebody's going to get you. Mm -hmm. You know, Fear that the fact that you pick up certain things, that you can be harmed. Mm -hmm. Now, I have learned that there are always opposites. Where there's good, there's bad. For Dark, sure. light. There's yes. always opposites, all right? But if you understand that you have not only a physical body, but a spiritual body, and that spiritual body that has, you are given your intuition mm -hmm. where you can perceive certain things that are not seen through the physical five yes. senses. Yes. That's okay. what we talk about seeing through the mind eyes because it is not something that I can take you and carry you and show Elizabeth here. Here is this, uh, you know, there's this TV screen. I can't show it to you. Mm -hmm. But if you believe and understand like we do, I can have a conversation with you about it. Mm -hmm. Well, but, you, 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 <laughs> you, know, I, you don't I, see it. Yeah. I, I told you my journey started out trying to understand why I saw, heard, and felt things that other mm -hmm. people didn't. And for a long time, I was scared. For a mm -hmm. long time, I feared it because people would tell me it was from the devil if mm -hmm. I was picking up these things. But when you recognize that this is just one dimension, this mm -hmm. physical dimension is only one dimension. Mm -hmm. That there are many others that you can perceive when you are using your sixth sense, mm -hmm. which is your guided system. It's yes. your sixth sense that allows you to pick up this information. And I know that with indigos, this tends to be one of the critical points that um, I work with. I have a, a new client that I'm working with, and mm -hmm. she is um, in her 20s, mm -hmm. very, very perceptive. She can easily, she's very clairvoyant. That means clear mm -hmm. seeing. She can yes. see angels. She can see guides. She can see deceased loved ones easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for her, and I understand because I have had to happen to me too, she feared it, you know, like and people were telling her something was wrong with her, you know, and oh, you're going to watch out, you know, you're going to be hurt. No, like with anything, once you understand it, 
you can't protect yourself. Once you mm -hmm. understand it, you can turn it down because our intuition, our psychic uh, radio station can be turned up and it can be turned down down. I have one client yeah. that I worked with who was a natural media medium. And she didn't like going in to large places. Like if she go into a restaurant, uh, deceased loved ones could pick up that she was a radio and she would see all of this and she was getting all of this. And, and she was like, should I give it to the person or what? And, and, and does this mean now that I can't go out uh, to, and literally she had to come mm. house now because of all of mm. the information that she was picking up. When we, as we work together, what she realized was she could turn the yes. radio down. Oh, oh, yep. You could even turn it off. Right. Or you could turn it up. And yes. that it, once you recognize that it's there and that uh, it, it it is, you There's have a bit of echoing on my end. I don't know on yours. Is it a bit of echoing, like a delay? And okay. So I don't know if you want to go out and come back in and pause because you're fading and coming. Okay, back. let me pause. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I I realized that. <laughs> We had to stop our recording because we were having such a bad internet um, connection. But uh, just winding up, I am doing essential skills to create the life you desire. I am stoked about doing it as a coach. I act as your cheerleader, your teacher, your partner, your accountability buddy. And it's going to be six weeks to really help hone in, take responsibility for yourself. Realize it's through your thoughts that you create your world. So you, you, you if you don't like what you see, then change what you thought. You know, that's the best indicator of what you've been thinking. And what you've been expecting is to look at how your life is right now. Now, you may not like what you see. And that's okay. The truth will set you free. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to look at, like we gave that example of being able a couple of shows ago, stand in front of the mirror naked. And that's who you are. That's who you are, accept it. Now, look at it. Is there an area that you want to change? If so, you can. There are wealths of ways to change it, but you have to recognize this is where you are, this is where you're, you're going, and then take responsibility, realize it's up to you to do the work that is required for you to have what you want. If you're willing to do the work, you can achieve. Beginning of the year, and I love this time of the year because I always look back at the past year. I always look because at the beginning of the year, it's not a resolution, it's an intention. I make an intention as to what I want for the year. Now, my intention last year was to have a show. My intention last year was to be able to do five, 10 minute morning meditation tips, strategies that my younger indigos who have their phone, that when they go out on their break, they could hear something positive. They could get one tip, one strategy that would make their life better. Okay. I didn't know how I was going to do that. I had no blessed idea as to how, but that was my intent to be able to do something where I could discuss these principles on a weekly basis where I, you know, I was reading my letter. I wanted to be able to do five to 10 minute um, uh, meditation, some type of 
daily thing that keeps reminding you, because that's what I use my daily word. I have many other things, daily stuff that keeps me focused, that keeps me on track to remember that I can, because it is a constant thing. Like my book is called Building Spiritual Muscle. And I realized that when you build muscle, it is a daily thing. It is not something yes. that you do just once or twice. It is a daily thing. And if you are willing to do the work, it will happen. I set my intention. I look back at that letter and I see how many of those things mm -hmm. are checked off. Who knew Blab was coming? Who knew? <laughs> okay. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> Who knew that Periscope was coming? So, you know, because I'm not good with writing. I told you about my red pen block. I'm not good mm -hmm. with writing. But for me, being able to talk and share mm -hmm. my information, yes. the universe will provide it. What you have to do is go fishing for the idea. Once you get mm -hmm. the idea, you take the idea and you say, hmm, this is going to move me in the right direction. And then be open to how, because the universe, your intuition will guide you as to how to take the next step. You don't need to know. You just have to be open and receptive to it. We met, who knows who I would met, meet you in what, October? Because I wanted a host. <laughs> I wanted somebody that I could talk to opposed to just talking out there in the air. That is why Blab is much better, has been, was the easier transition for me opposed to Periscope. Who knew? But there you are in Periscope now, so there you go. <laughs> Who knew? I went out, I asked a bunch of people. I tried to do it at first, and then I just relaxed, and you showed up. So if you... And that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about in the essential skills to create the life you desire. If you are willing to first take responsibility, say, hey, I'm the captain of this ship. So where do I want to take this ship? Where do I want to sell this ship? Beautiful. It's up to me. I don't, it doesn't matter what my background is. It doesn't matter if I'm a man or a woman. It doesn't matter if I have money or I don't have money. First, decide what do you want. Then take a look. How far are you from where you want to be? You mm -hmm. know, and get the help. And like I said, I am here to help. You know, the essential skills for creating the life you desire. I'm so passionate about it. And I'm ready to get started with yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And if anybody is interested in it, go over to my web, go over to my website, find out if you're an indigo there. I'll have up on the website soon a link so you can sign up for the class. But you can go to Facebook right now on my page, K Elizabeth Green. You will see I do have the class outline. I do have the cost of the class. It's a six-week class. And on each session, it's going to be weekly lessons. Okay. That was me this time. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I turned right off. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, well. <laughs> okay. Excuse me, oh, folks. Oh, oh, oh. Trying to okay. get it down. You know how it is. Okay. All right. So uh, trying to make sure that, let me turn it off as we're winding up, because I know that you have your Christmas holiday. For those of you who came late, know that you can uh, listen to the replay and also know that if you have any questions, I'm here to help you. We're talking about the essential skills for creating the life that you want. There are skills just like in elementary school. Once you get them, you can. It's you can do. You can. And um, yeah. You can. You really <laughs> you can. can. You, yeah. You can. 
can. You can. As you, you know, as you keep saying, we started in October. We're in our third month. And we know that we're going to do this for the whole of 2016 because that's the plan that we have. And we know we're carrying it through. We're going to be right here with report back with the growth of our businesses as it grow, as we help people grow and bring them on to talk about how we have helped them grow, you know, our past clients and future clients. And just sharing, just really, they sharing their story, we sharing our story, because that's what Blob has allowed us to do, Periscope in small bite-sized pieces, Blob in more in the sense where we get to interview people, there's a longer discussion, you got interactions on the side. This is a beautiful space, I am loving it, I know, uh, so is Elizabeth, uh, I co-host with her every Tuesday here, and we have a blast. It's an hour long. Sometimes we go longer when we have guests or people, you know, asking questions. Today is the holiday, so we're finishing right on top of the hour. My show is on Thursday at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time, and I, I'm a money mindset coach, so I talk about money and all kinds of other bits and pieces. So <laughs> we are so happy to have you here. Yep, we are definitely because um, I help you get the ideas. Karen mm-hmm. helps you take those ideas and realize and put some practical things there. So if you if, and I've learned so much from her and Karen, I was just getting such goosebumps rolling down my back because in the year, you know, we've used the end of this year for us to get comfortable with this format. Right. You know, next year, <laughs> Could you imagine how it's going to grow. I just felt, you know, as you were talking, Karen, mm-hmm. I, I was just feeling, you know, how big, what an impact we'll make in the mm-hmm. lives of those, you know, to, and, and when I look at the light on this map, mm-hmm. I'm waiting to see the map totally lit up. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you know, we're starting with ripples. And yes. we're starting we know this. with. Uh, we know this I, I, I was to mention to you. <laughs> hey, I'm starting on one side of the, the country, and you're starting mm-hmm. up on. I'm looking at this map. Just imagine. Mm-hmm. Just imagine when all of those are lit up. That Mm -hmm. means we're letting our light shine. And the more we let our light shine, the better this world will be. And ultimately, Mm -hmm. I think both of our goal is to make a difference. Yes. To make a difference, to bring the light. And as people start revealing themselves and start letting their light shine, this is going to 2016 is going to be such a powerful year, such a powerful year. So um, you want to know more about the challenge? Do it. Join Karen on Thursday. We're doing Thursday, right? Yes. So we, oh, oh, we're doing Thursday. <laughs> we're going to do New Year's Eve. We're going to finish yes. up. We're going to finish up, you know, what we'll finish next week, but we are going to be doing Thursday and I'm just going to leave you with my favorite poem, which is don't quit when things go wrong as they sometimes will. When the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile, but you have to sigh when care is pressing you down a bit rest if you must, but don't you quit for life is queer with its twists and turns as every one of us will someday learn. And many, many a failure turn about that might have won if they'd stuck it out. Success is just failure turned inside out the silver tint of the cloud of doubt. And you never know how close you are. You may be near when it seems so far. So stick to your, to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. I wish everybody a happy, healthy, and prosperous 
Christmas and New Year. I'm going to be back before New Year's. Uh, <laughs> you know, may I thank you as always, Karen. I uh, And may light, love, and laughter follow you on your path wherever you might be. Have a blessed one. You too.